Okay, so I'm going to start a new file. All right, and uh, we are going to talk a little bit about deformers. So first of all, I think what I'll do is just start with a cube and um, I'm just going to make this a little thinner overall. Not like that, like this. Okay, so this is what I want to start with. And what I want to do uh, before I use the deformers is optimize this a bit. So if we go to display with lines, what I'm going to do is add some segments here. So if I make this 10 and I make this 10 and then I make this 20, I'm going to have a nice even grid across my cube. Uh, and that way, when I use the deformers, it will help bend accordingly, right? So now um, I can choose something like bend, for example. I put the bend inside of here. I can then bend my object, right? And so already you can imagine how this animated can be really useful for how you can um, uh, activate an object, right? So. And I want to talk a little bit about a different way of rendering, uh, of animating for this. So you'll notice with um, with any of these, any object, right? So an object has all of these little dots next to them, right? The deformer has these little dots next to them. Even if we create a new material, you'll notice these little dots next to everything. Anything that has those dots can be animated. Right. So, you know, just as a quick example, if I choose a color, okay, and I put it on this object, let's get our shading with lines off. I could animate it. So, and typically with things like this, especially for these, if you want to animate these things that have these little dots on them, my recommendation for this is not to use the active object. Um, recorder, but rather use the auto keyframe method, right? And so what this will do is it will um, record any changes that you do to any sort of thing you're working on. So I, I, I recommend using this, you know, be, be aware that it's on because sometimes what happens is that folks have the auto keyframe thing on and they go around their project and they mess with a bunch of stuff and it records everything that they do and then they're like, why is my project going crazy? Well, it's because you auto keyframe something and changed a whole bunch of stuff and then it recorded everything you did. So just remember, when auto keyframe is on, you want to just do your tasks and then turn it off. Okay, so let's talk about this. So I've got my color here. Okay, over here in the attributes manager, I can turn the auto keyframe on. It is going to give you a red uh, marquee around the picture viewer, the, the viewport. And here is where you can start to adjust. So if I click on the button next to the color, essentially what that means is it's going to be putting a keyframe in at zero for the color itself, okay? So then if I move forward in the timeline and I change this to blue, then it's gonna to change to blue and put a keyframe in. So if I go back to start, it's gonna move from orange to blue. Right, it's going to interpolate the change of color and notice the the adjustments down here. It's like bouncing those hues back and forth and sort of adjusting along the way. So it's cool. So if you can imagine in your animation, you can change color, you can change you can do all tons of stuff that you can do with auto keyframe. Now I want to turn it off. Okay, so that way we don't, we don't have that continuing to go. So this the reason why I illustrate that with the color is because it kind of shows you an easy way that you can make those adjustments with that little um, auto keyframe button highlighted, right? So when I'm working with something like bend, and actually I think that this is gonna be distracting if I, let's just do this. So if I wanted to get rid of this then, right? Go to my animate menu. I've got the material on here. I can just hit delete and now I don't have any keyframes anymore, right? Go back to my startup menu. Okay. so. Bend, all right? We can use the auto keyframe button 
and we can select any of these things or we can just kind of play around. So if I just click on strength, for example, it's gonna drop in a keyframe. If I move forward in the timeline, I can move this over accordingly. It's gonna make those different, notice that it, it also changed the angle as well. So we recorded that. Uh, if I go back, so I've got this so far, I've got that kind of motion, right? Uh, and then to finish this off, you know, I could I could make that kind of complete. So there we go. I've recorded everything along the way. It gives this weird kind of twist and then it bends down. Okay. So again, auto keyframe allows you to really kind of play and manipulate and see how things happen. Uh, and deformers are a great way to, um, to make any of those sort of odd motions happen, right? So if you imagine we have all kinds of different things up here, bulge and shear and taper and twist, and there's even a squash and stretch one. Um, there's um, jiggle, which is an automated kind of thing. There's, there's um, spherify. There's all kinds of different stuff that you can do that can really um, alter an object. So I recommend kind of playing around with these a little bit. So bend obviously can give you an interesting kind of sense of movement. And again, what I want to highlight here is that the reason why this has a pretty nice smooth movement to it is because we added those, those polygons, right? So if it had fewer polygons, oh, I'm turn my auto keyframe off. <laughs> if I had this one and one, one and one, then you see it doesn't have any bend to it because there's no polygons for it to bend. So my motion would be much different. You know, still interesting, but not bendy, right? So more segments equals smoother bends for your deformers and you get a much different kind of look, okay? Uh, and optimize too. If, you, if I had a million polygons in here, it would take a lot, lot longer to render. So you wanna think about optimization as a key. Okay, so that is, um, is bend, um, animate that. Let's just get rid of that here and here, okay? Other functions, um, bulge is a great one, especially when you're working with things that can kind of um, uh, have gravity hit the floor, kind of stretch, have that elasticity to it. So bulge is gonna allow you to go out and in. And again, with auto keyframes on, um, Let's do strength at zero. With our auto keyframes, it's just a matter of highlighting what we want, hitting the auto keyframe button on, and then moving forward in the timeline and adjusting accordingly. And you can change the curvature, right? There's different things that you can do here uh, as you go out to zero. Okay, and we can preview. So bulges out, bulges in, and works in that sort of form, right? Uh, I might want to actually take this timeline and move it over. We can do that, certainly. And then we could um, bulge it out again a little bit. Okay, and then actually, I do want the curvature to be 100, though. Um, and then bring it down to zero again, because I'm creating that sort of like secondary action sometimes can be really helpful. It bounces in and then it kind of bounces out. Not the greatest, but you get the idea there. It, it that's sort of second motion sometimes can be really helpful with how it comes through. So imagine something dropping down, bulging out, squishing back up, you know, that sort of thing can really be helpful. Uh, you can also go the other way too, so it can bulge in, it can bulge out. Bulge is a great uh, a great thing for that sort of sense of motion. Let's just delete that. If I delete the bulge, turn the auto keyframe off, uh, then it should be gone <clears throat> in our animate menu. Yeah, so it's not in our, the keyframes are gone once you delete the object that had the keyframes on it. Um, uh, taper and twist, twist is great, same sort of thing. If this is on here, you can imagine something kind of moving around, uh, looking back and forth, and kind of working in that frame. And you can have two at the same time, right? So if I had bulge and bend, 
both of these can interact with the object. So I could have something uh, untwist here. Let's go back to zero. So if I auto key keyframe the twist first, then you know I can move forward. I can move back. Okay, and then let's go back to zero. So so far I have kind of a twist back and forth, right? And then I could activate the bend. So bend I could move forward. And I could move it a little bit and then move forward a little bit a little less. Uh, and then finally, we'll go back to zero. So here we have a twist and a bend kind of working together into a more complicated motion. Right. So again, turn the auto keyframe off. Deformers are great to use along with the position and scale and rotation, uh, especially when we're thinking about animating inanimate objects. You know, if I took something like uh, I don't know, cell phone for example, and made it bend and twist and give it those sort of actions, it can certainly start to have some character properties. And so between these things, there's a lot that you can do, and I really recommend um, kind of just playing around, just doing some simple things to see what you can activate and see how these motions can, can, can affect one another and change.